Are you ready? Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends, yep. Making sense of it all. Now I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. All right, let's do it. The Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. So, you know, last week, a uh, big 180 from the Biden administration about the border. Oh, yeah. Cracked down. <laughs> this illegal immigration stuff. Yeah. It, we got we to gotta put a stop to this. Uh-huh. They saw the polling on it, and we had this whole song and dance, and then you had Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas out there talking with Neil Cavoto. Neil, Neil, this is something where it's going to be responsible, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then you come to find out. The Biden administration is secretly telling Border Patrol to release migrants into the United States, despite the executive order. Yeah. Yes. Well, of course. Well, uh, you didn't really believe it, did you? Well, of course not. <laughs> no, but say. then you hear other people say, yeah, well, well, right wing right. conspiracy that he's really not trying to do anything here. I was waiting for the uh, for the details on this and we've got them now. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, and the reality is, again, it's too little too late. You're not actually shutting down the border. Um, and when you have a situation where Border Patrol and DHS and HHS, which manages the shelter system, they're, if they're overrun already, what are they supposed to do? If you're not willing to turn everyone away and, and just say, nope, we're not, we're not doing this anymore, and you're allowing a trickle to come in, you right. still have the same problem. Well, the Washington Examiner got this memo that Border Patrol agents were given by Biden officials. And this was right after the executive order. OK, <laughs> and this is, of course, a bunch of people saying, hey, this is a little more than window dressing already. But the instructions that Border Patrol agents were given contradicts what senior Biden administration officials told reporters in a call on Tuesday. And it would be the case for migrants from Eastern Hemisphere countries who traveled through multiple uh, countries without seeking asylum in order to reach the United States, referred to as extra hemispheric migrants. Oh, sure. Okay. It's like a title of a Yes album. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole first side is one song. Exactly, yes. Put into four different That's parts. It. Yes. Yes, something like that. So, yes, I mean, the long story short there, the big takeaway is, yes, it was all window dressing, and not even that now it doesn't seem like. So more on that a little bit later. Joe Biden was out there over the weekend talking again, and he mixed up something again. Dude, I I, I mean, this is something that's become a pattern uh, where he talks about his son, Bo Biden, who passed away from cancer, but he, he says that he died, he was killed in Iraq. Again. Again. Yeah. He so he's visiting a uh, a cemetery in France and he's talking about the significance of soldiers who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Mhm. Yeah. And then we go there again. You know, I don't want I don't want to make this personal, but every time I show up at a military site where veterans are buried, it uh, brings back memories of hearing my grandfather and my mother talk about the loss of their son and brother in the South Pacific. And I think about my son, Bo, uh, after he in Iraq. <laughs> I don't know why he does this. It is. I guess maybe it's an automatic response. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know, because his son did not die in Iraq. No. And it, it is just... I, I don't know. It's 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 bizarre to have a stolen valor president uh, at this point. It, it is. It wasn't just one slip up. Because remember the first time he said it, um, and it was shortly after the uh, Abbey Gate bombing at the airport in Kabul, in Afghanistan, mm-hmm. uh, where he had mentioned his son dying. And I mean, to me, that was the most livid I'd ever been at a politician because that is not the same as being blown up by a suicide bomber in an ultimately preventable attack. Right. Um, And then he starts talking about his kid died in Iraq, and there were some people 
some apologists for Joe Biden saying, well, he has mentioned before that because when uh, Bo was overseas, he where he was stationed was near a burn pit. And Joe Biden has mentioned before that he thought that maybe that's what gave uh, his son the cancer that ultimately killed him. Mm -hmm. And I said, OK. And if you want to try to give him the benefit of the doubt at the time, you could kind of say that. But, no, it gets more and more explicit as time goes on that my son was killed in Iraq. And he wasn't. No, he was not. He also referred to, uh, I think, Uncle Bozy there, didn't he? He did, Uncle Who was Bozy. eaten by cannibals. Eaten he by, left that part out, though. Eaten by cannibals in New yeah. Guinea. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> his team got to him on that one and go, yeah. hey, hold on. Yeah. No more, no more of that talk right. with Uncle Bozy. Just leave that there. But I thought we had heard that from different people in the administration, they were going to tell him, stop using Bo that way. Yeah. To, to stop, because this is not an advantage for you politically. It is working against you now. That was from sources within yeah. the White House. Every time but apparently he, he forgot yes. that part. Every time he is somewhere, he makes it about himself somehow. It doesn't matter to which group, what people. I mean, they could be... You know, Filipino Catholics, and he went to a Filipino Catholic church. Of course. You know, I mean, this guy, the kissing, the two guys kissing, and dad in the car. And, oh, you know, yeah, all that. I mean, all these stories are ridiculous. Well, you know what? That does sound, you know, and who knows for sure, but it sounds to me, and I didn't see him when he spoke these words, that he's off script. Oh, yeah. When he says, I don't want to make it, you know. You know, I don't want, I don't want to make this personal, but. But I'm going to. Mm -hmm. It's so frail. It's so frail. But I'm guessing that was yeah. off script. Oh, it totally was. And yeah, so he I probably it was. forgot that. He but that's where his go brain there. goes immediately. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Well, he's he's senile and a lifetime a lifelong liar. Um, so yeah, and just an all around bad guy. So he reverts to the story that he made up. Right. I agree with you. I think that's true. I think it's always there and it just triggers. I think that's probably right. Meanwhile, Trump was out on the campaign trail. Yeah. Well, I just think this is really funny because he was having some technical issues during a rally over the weekend, and it turned into a stand-up routine. That's I mean, the way he does this. Yes. Tell him to make the microphone louder. It's terrible. Yeah. He just came up. Are the teleprompters not working? So not even a little bit. Great job. And then I don't pay the company that does it, right? And then I end up with a story Trump doesn't pay. I don't pay contractors that do a job. And that's a job. That's a job. You can't read a word. But you know what? It usually ends up that the speech is better. It's crazy. Then they'll say, oh, isn't it ter terrible? Trump takes advantage of his con. Now, I take great. When I have a good contractor or a subcontractor, nobody gets paid faster. But when I have contractors that do this kind of work, you can have them. Can you imagine if Biden was up? He he's no good with the teleprompter. He's the worst I've seen. But could you imagine if the teleprompters were off? Here's Biden. He's, he's a, oh, shit. Oh, he wouldn't even say anything because he's incapable. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Joe Biden poops himself on a good day. So, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. There's something I got to play for you guys. Give me like 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. So we all got a great laugh out of that. Yeah. Did anybody see any part of Good Morning America today? No. No. Okay. So they contrast Biden and Trump. It is propaganda. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, you just got to laugh. You've got to hear it because they they talk about both, and you just need to hear it. i got to get your reaction oh, out of that. Right. It's really good. Um, but before we get there, uh, you had another story that we needed to get to, David. <clears throat> yeah. And I, all I see, am I supposed to read this the right way? Is this the, the way the actual story reads, or is this some sort of Van Camp speak? No, this is this is how it reads. Fatties for Palestine? What is that? Yes, fatties for Palestine. There's a morbidly, <laughs> morbidly obese lady who calls herself a fat liberationist. Now, she promotes fatties for Palestine. That is not okay. me All right. that, that said that. I, I would say rascal fodder for Palestine. <laughs> I would be a little bit more, you know, polite about it. Robbins uh, would say fatties for Palestine. Yeah, right. Yeah, well. <laughs> so this fat liberationist says... It's the duty of fat people everywhere to support the people of Palestine who are equally as oppressed as fat people in America. What? <laughs> Get oh one of this. Gosh. 
Okay. Every single form of oppression is inherently and intimately connected. So for me, my hope is that if you are following my page for fat liberation content and you yourself are a fat liberationist. All right, time out. Yeah. Okay, we've heard everything about people being oppressed that's what every university supposedly teaches now it's the oppressors and the oppressed and that's how you get what we have right now the marxism the craziness everywhere the crt all that crap but this is another level this is next level stuff yeah. <laughs> overweight people in america and people in palestine yes share the same struggle the same struggle yes i i yeah. would just say <laughs> As, as a moved American, we have had fat liberation for decades now, and it, and it came in the form of jeans with elastic waistbands, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, That's a very liberating th thing for us fat people. I got no more gripes, okay? I'll take it a step further and say Sears with Huskies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, all I'm thinking is for the people in Palestine, they just want to switch spots yeah, for right. a while and get oppressed here <laughs> because... Hamas is taking all the food there. <laughs> right. So this is going to force a hunger strike for the fatties for Palestine. Wow. That you are actively standing in solidarity in whatever ways that you can with the people of Palestine. There is a fundraiser that y'all need to go and support immediately. It's a collaboration between a fat Palestinian American activist a illustrator and a creator on the internet all three of them came together to produce this shirt <laughs> it's, the, it's the fatties for palestine shirt it comes in size triple x and larger God, i swear <laughs> man our paper shack in the mountains somewhere no electricity no running water i just want to go there <laughs> We're in a simulation. We're in a movie. Yeah. This, that we are. In a, this, <laughs> what? I know that this can't be real. Holy smokes! You know, and this is the month to promote all that stuff. So it's out there. You know. Oh, so. yeah. absolutely. Golly! All right, I'll get. You I that. do want one of those T-shirts, though. I really do. Great propaganda you got to hear. And blaming Israel for rescuing its people—it's really something, man. That's going on right now. All coming up right in. know and trust is now angie and we're so much more than just a list we still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly we can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish so remember angie's list is now angie and we're here to get your job done right get started at angie.com that's a-n-g-i or download the app today Hey there, you and aisle two. I see you by the fiber and laxatives. You still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain? If your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over-the-counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-LINZESS. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. All right. The Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Okay. So I was out of the news cycle for a couple of days and then catching up and understand what happened with Israel 
and rescuing hostages. And this was this joyous thing to see the mm-hmm. reunion with family and you're looking at, okay, how is this going to be covered today? And Good morning, America. Four Israeli hostages rescued as the government faces a new political crisis. Political crisis? What do you mean? Huh? New details about the health of the hostages and the rescue operation in broad daylight as Israel faces questions and condemnation for the number of Palestinian civilians killed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huge controversy. Huge. Controversial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are they supposed to do? Yeah, I, I keep hearing because uh, the numbers, what? They, they said like 240 was like the upper range of the number of people who were killed. During, and they're getting that from Hamas. Yeah, during the rescue operation. Yeah. And they keep saying civilians. Well, if you're part of, a, of, of an effort to keep hostages, kidnap victims, mm-hmm. you're not a civilian anymore. But more on that a little bit later, because what I had told you guys as far as the propaganda with Biden and Trump and the contrast that we saw, because they were reporting on Trump being back on the campaign trail. Um, uh, Here's little George. Donald Trump, former president, set to meet virtually the probation office for a sentencing interview after holding his first major campaign rally over the weekend since his criminal conviction. Rachel Scott. So then Rachel Scott starts in. You know, and talking about he's out on the road and he, and he was, well. I'm preparing to meet virtually with probation officers from his Mar-a-Lago estate. I got indicted again and again and again. I was never indicted. In a period of this little tiny period of time, I was like a, I was like a, a ping pong ball. <laughs> Over the weekend. The- See, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. If they're trying to make him look ridiculous, that I think that backfired. But listen how it goes. Over the weekend, the former president rallying supporters in Las Vegas, once again bashing the four criminal cases against him and escalating his verbal attacks on prosecutors, using profanity to lash out at special counsel Jack Smith. Uh-oh. He's a deranged, a dumb guy. He's a dumb... <laughs> Trump supporters waiting hours in the scorching 100-degree heat. I don't want anybody going on me. We need every voter. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> See, now the, the press will take that, and they'll say, he said a horrible thing. <laughs> that plays into his hand. Yeah, right. He, yeah, right, because the bait's there, right? That's it's, the worm on the hook. It's so yeah. funny, dude. Officials say 24 attendees sought medical treatment because of the heat. Oh. Trump also using inflammatory language about immigrants and mocking President Biden. At one point, going on a riff about the teleprompters. I pay all this money to teleprompter people. And I'd say 20% of the time they don't work. Trump praising the rioters who attacked the Capitol on January 6th, calling them warriors. Those J6 warriors, they were warriors, but they were really more than anything else. They're victims of what happened. The reality, approximately 500 people have been charged with assaulting or impeding (laughs) officers, with nearly half of them pleading guilty or being convicted at trial. Is Rachel Scott, was she like the student council president when anyone was having any fun at all? Yeah. And this isn't fun right now. Pretty much, we yeah. Mean, we mean business right now. <laughs> She's this like is a, business. She's like if the phrase, that's hmm. not funny, we're a person. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's right. you know, she was a hall monitor and just carried that through the rest yeah, of her right. life. And keeps going. Despite the heat, thousands of supporters coming out, some wearing shirts bluntly reading, quote, I'm voting for the convicted felon. <laughs> Has the conviction hardened your support for Trump? Oh, yeah. Does any of it give you pause in voting for him? No, not at all. In fact, it just strengthens my resolve. Of course. But how of could course. That be? I, but here's the contrast. With Trump back on trial, the president was overseas, showing a sharp contrast as he visited a World War I cemetery outside Paris where U.S. troops are buried. In 2018, Trump didn't make a similar visit, his administration (laughs) citing bad weather. Uh. But his former chief of staff, John Kelly, later saying Trump declined to go and claiming Trump called the young American soldiers buried there losers. (laughs) Trump has vehemently denied the claim. Biden visiting the very American cemetery, Trump skipped. The idea that I'd come to Normandy and not make this short trip here to pay tribute Back to that probation interview. But they don't have him finish the sentence. I was just going to yeah. say. <laughs> That's it. That was a mid-sentence clip. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also claimed his son was killed in Iraq. Yeah. Yes. No, they left that part out, though. That's state-run TV. Yeah, it really is. I mean, just when you think you've heard it all, man. So there's your propaganda for the day. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. 
All right, biggest story today, David? Uh, biggest. Well, the biggest one we didn't get to yet, we'll have to get to, and that's the controversy over the plus-size Miss uh, Alabama. A lot oh, of yeah, people are talking a, about that. That's a pretty big one. I mean, yeah. literally. <laughs> I was going to say, oops. <laughs> Well, it's it's kind of wild. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> but we'll get to that story. But, but as far as biggest news wise, well, you have this you know dog and pony show of an executive order meant to uh, restrict movement across our southern border that is not really working and not really being enforced. Yeah, how about that? Seems yeah, like a pretty boy. big deal. Right. Okay, we got to get to that. And a Democrat was asked about the Hunter Biden trial, and all of a sudden they lost connection. I can't what? I can't, I can't hear you here. We'll get to that. And what's your story? Coming up. Camp and Robbins show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Did anyone happen to see Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer? No, I missed on this. Sunday I did morning? not see it, no. Okay. Um, you know, some people think that she's going to have something to do with this election yet. What a lint head. Wow, that was out of nowhere. Well, lint she head. is. Dang. She's just, well, please. Someone what? was reading his Archie comics. <laughs> What is lint head exactly? I haven't heard that one. What do you one. think it is? Well, I know it's not good, but it's, is that is that an oldie? Is that a I current don't know. one? I don't know. I always I've said it before a hundred times. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. So that's just in the repertoire. Yeah, I, th- I occasionally yeah throw it out there. Okay, I don't think I have to explain it, but that's you know I think most people know. Well, yeah, I figured it was bad. Yeah, yeah. But that's David not may good. not know as the millennial. He's like never heard it before in my life. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard lint head before. Well, you keep it in the repertoire. But it now. is. It's that's that's going in my insult holster. I'll tell you that right yes, now, sir. Right there. Okay. Does that mean that you're not very smart, or does well, that mean your hair no, looks that like means, lint? It means you're a genius. No, it <laughs> means you're not very smart. Like well, I, did, I thought maybe it was lint, some sort very of fragile. You know, yeah. so not yes. not much there. Not a lot maybe of substance. It was a hair thing. No, I okay. don't care about her hair. All right. I think her hair is plastic, and she takes it on and puts it off every night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dana Bash is on interviewing her about you know whatever, and then she's got one other question for her. And the timing just so happens, huh? What? I can't quite hear you there. Are we losing a connection? How many times has this happened with oh, politicians God. on oh, these shows? Yeah. They get to the uncomfortable. Remember, it was Kamala with Charlemagne the Fraud? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I, I can't hear him. And he actually said, Dad, she's pretending like she can't hear me all of a sudden. Yeah, right. like, I hear you, Charlemagne. But this was Dana Bash. I want to turn to uh, a different, very different trial. And that is one that is going on in Delaware with the president's son, Hunter Biden. He is on trial for obtaining and possessing a firearm while under the influence of illegal drugs, which was against the law. A Republican Lindsey Graham says that an average American would not have been prosecuted Dana, are you there? for this. <laughs> yes, Governor, can you hear me? Did you just try to speak? Okay, it sounds like the governor can't hear me. You know what? We're going to take a very quick commercial break. Mm hmm. And get this fixed, and we'll be right back. Okay, then you wonder, is she really coming back? Did they get it fixed? She came back. Oh. And then just said, you know, I don't know how to weigh in on that, Dana. She was given a statement to read. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. think it sounds like you can hear something in the background. It sounds like a touch-tone pad thing. Okay, are they on dial-up? The Come on, what is that? No, it sounded like it, yeah. Maybe, I, I think someone went keyboard mash on her end. Like, because you can kind of hear some muttering going on. Uh huh. Yes. And I'm just wondering, like, did somebody sabotage? Like, oh, oh gosh, no! Hold on. That's what I wonder because we lose a connection, like a Wi-Fi, fairly often. Whether yeah. it's a Zoom call, to face whatever it is, I never hear that like a dial tone. Do you? No, but they when that happens, Republican not using... Lindsey Graham says that an average American would not have been prosecuted Dana, are you for there? this. Yes, Governor, can you hear me? Did you just drop a feed? Hmm? <laughs> Did yeah. you just drop a feed? Hmm? Right. Anyway, 
people are just saying, okay, that's BS. Of course it is. You just weren't ready for the question. No. Okay, to the controversy out of Alabama. And listen, man, before we even get into this, this isn't about hating. It's just, it's head scratching to a lot of people. The newly crowned Miss Alabama facing backlash for what, I like the way this story reads, for what critics are saying is the promotion of unhealthy lifestyles. Mm. Sarah Milliken's 23, uh, named winner of the National American Miss Pageant competition over the weekend. Um, I mean, I don't have a particular weight with the story, but I mean, from the pictures, as a medical diagnosis, you would say morbidly obese. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And that's not to shame anybody. No. It's a descriptor. Yes, I mean, like, yeah. okay, there's just medical facts, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, she told uh, an interviewer, no matter what your body looks like, no matter where you come from, you can do anything you set your mind to. Okay, as far as all of the pageantry goes, it's not my thing. It, whatever. You want to judge on talent, looks, whatever. Usually it used to be, okay, it was basically on looks, and then there was a little talent involved, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is obviously not healthy. What is going on? What do you think? Oh, I think it's bending the knee of the inclusive wokeness. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, to garner some sort of support. Do you think it glorifies obesity? Well, it doesn't yeah. non-glorify it. I'm trying to think of a better word there, but yeah. Yeah. Like, almost like, see? Yeah, it makes it okay. She's beautiful. Right. Yeah. And okay. it, you forget you. Yeah. So, yeah, there were a bunch of people commenting about it online, saying calling her beautiful is fine and good. That's all in the eye of the beholder. But let's be honest with ourselves. She's extremely unhealthy, and this is a slap in the face of the young girls who have worked hard to maintain the diet to actually be a beauty queen. That's right. And I, I heard some context to this because mm -hmm. she's not really Miss Alabama because it's not part of the Miss America thing. It's actually part of something called, uh, where was it? I just had it. National American Miss. So I want it's a different beauty pageant company or 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 uh, just a, it's a different thing altogether. And okay. so some are wondering whether or not this was about getting that organization's name out there. Like, hey, we're going to be pushing the envelope and all of this, because there are people who are like way into the pageant stuff. I'm not one of them who are saying her real title isn't even really Miss Alabama. That's that's part of the Miss America thing. Uh, or whatever. Man, I mean, I'm reading this story right here. It says, besides controversy over the Miss Alabama crowning. Okay. So that is different. The National American Miss whatever. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yes, it's a it's a different pageant organization. These, these pageants are also absolutely money-making, money-grubbing events. People oh. pay boatloads of, of money to enter them yes and you know they have to pay for all of it themselves and i mean we've known people that have been I, in it before absolutely i knew a guy who ran one what a scammer that guy well, and was you, we've both known female contestants yes. in different pageants and yes. it is it's it's a money grabber there it absolutely is it's and they, they keep putting different titles on it names on it now the now the transgender person that won miss maryland is that the same deal or is that actually or is I that that Miss, was like the Miss America thing. Though. That's the Miss Maryland USA. That's yeah. the oh, other okay. one. Well, that's yeah. the offshoot. That's the double A ball of Miss <laughs> yeah. America. Okay, and so yeah. they're saying, hey, we're not going to make a mockery of this thing with morbidly obese people, right. but but chicks <laughs> with penises, all good here. Yes. Okay, just to clarify, where are we? <laughs> My talent is his uh, basketball three-point shooting yeah, yeah. or <laughs> and dunking Being standing yeah, up right yeah <laughs> yeah i was gonna say from long distance <laughs> <laughs> i can whiz in a bucket eight feet away hey, watch this talent Woo. let's see you do that all right oh my gosh man insanity all right moving on that part of the show go around the table may not be the biggest story out there but it caught your attention david today what's your story the canadian cancer society uh, is apologizing now because they were talking about cervical cancer and they were uh, apparently uh, told that it was 
very, very offensive to some people in Canada to refer to the cervix as a cervix. What? So uh, they said that, well, because men can have these body parts, too. Men cannot. Men do not have a cervix, no matter no, how. They no, not. they don't. No, men do not. Anyway. Um, and they said, you know, we should have been more inclusive. And they used my favorite absolutely offensive term, front hole. They said... <laughs> They, they said trans, non-binary, and gender diverse people face significant barriers to accessing health care and are less likely than cisgender people to be screened for cancer. In a Words Matter section on the organization's official website, the Canadian Cancer Society apologized, saying, hey, you might find the term cervix offensive, and you might prefer the term front hole. To re- <laughs> we recognize... They write (laughs) that many trans men and non-binary people may have mixed feelings about or feel distance from words like (laughs) cervix. You may prefer other words like front hole. We recognize Uh, the limitations of the words we've used while also acknowledging the need for simplicity. Also, you could use the term bonus hole. (sighs) Bonus hole? That's an extra. It's it's not mini golf for crying out loud. <laughs> well, that, that, well, that would say an it's, extra, doesn't it? It's not like, oh, that's a bonus one right there. No, that's not how any of that works. It's a game show. <laughs> Contestants, <laughs> you get to play the bonus hole round. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, dude. I'll cut my losses. I, my my daughter is, is uh, four and a half years old. And I'm going to make it my mission when she's old enough to understand these conversations that if you ever go to a gynecologist who refers to any part of you as a front hole or a bonus hole, you're leaving immediately. Man, golly. Because that guy probably started out his practice in the back of a van. Jeez. (sighs) Okay. I think we're. Ah, boy, howdy. Ready to move (laughs) on. One story after another after another. Like, where are we? Yeah, well, I got one here, too. Oh, you do, too? Sure. We should move on. Stop. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> Don't even. Uh, for what's your story, what do you got today, Scott? Well, our story begins with Bridget Bandit, whose real name is Sherry Lake. She was speaking, featured speaker, at the Texas Democrat Convention this weekend. David, were you in attendance? I was not. Oh, uh, you missed out on Brenda. She talked about uh, Drag Queen Story Hour in schools. I am a product of the Texas public school system. I have worked with children for over a decade, and I am now a full-time drag queen in Austin, Texas. Sometimes I read books to children in drag. (laughs) And while some may argue that reading a book to children in a full-length, long-sleeved, hot pink gown and cotton candy colored wig is inappropriate, the truth is that children are safer at a drag story time than at their own schools. That's it. All right. Where's the stats on that? Well, let's not be, you know, too choosy about it, shall we? There is one more clip I want to play from her, and well, anyway, here it is. I think. No, there it is. While the drag <laughs> ban bill may have been blocked, the trans youth health care ban has gone into effect here in Texas, preventing access to hormone blockers that are medically necessary for more than just trans youth. Gender affirming care is life saving. Access to health care is a basic human right. These policies disproportionately affect LGBTQIA plus youth and people of color. We have a duty people. to protect our most marginalized communities. Trans kids deserve to grow into healthy adults. There you go. That's the uh, Texas Democrat Convention, ladies and gentlemen. And people of color. Because most of the time when I'm seeing, like, an 8-year-old on the news who's transitioning, their parents are the whitest human beings on, on the planet. Yeah, but they try to be all-encompassing. Yeah, but it's... Like, all the oppressed in one area. I'd mm-hmm. like to know what marginalized means. <laughs> marginalized? Holy smokes. What do you mean? I hardly think that's befitting any of that. <laughs> marginalized? <laughs> 
What are you saying? Because it's a whole month? Well, it's months, years. Yes. M- a culture. It's everything, man. I know. All it's right. true. All right. You know what? Just for time's sake, I'll I'll hold my story for later. It's a sad tale. Okay. Where a dream got crushed. Okay. It may have to do with vacation injuries, that sort of thing. Oh, no. That's a thing, you know. But we'll get to that. And did you see the Florida? What happened with the SWAT team taking out the guy robbing the place? Oh, yeah. All coming up. Stirring fiber, exercising, frequent trips to the store for more laxatives and fiber. Sounds like your constipation with belly pain is a lot to manage. But if your symptoms that keep coming back are signs of irritable bowel syndrome with constipation or IBSC, ask your doctor how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at linzess.com or call 1 800 L I N Z E S S. There's always action on Prize Picks, and this is the perfect time to try out something new as basketball is winding down. With Prize Picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game. You can make a Prize Picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. Baseball is happening. Women's basketball is just getting started. With young stars like Caitlin Clark, there's always something going on. If you're looking for promotions, Prize Picks has got you covered every week. From lowering select player stat projections on Tuesdays, which increases your chance of getting a win, to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Make sure to check out eSports in June because for every Wednesday and Saturday, if your lineup doesn't win, you'll get your entry fee back. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Download the app today and use code MVCR for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code MVCR on Price Picks for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah. The Mark Lee Van Camp and Robbins show. You know, for the first time in our history, the interest we pay on the national debt surpassed every individual budget item except Social Security. Yeah, think about that. The U.S. spends more on interest than on national defense or even Medicare. And it's getting worse because, well, we keep printing and spending more money. Yeah, there's a reason why savvy investors, central banks, and concerned savers are turning to gold, something not tied to this inflated U.S. dollar, you can too with the help of Birch Gold. For over 20 years, Birch Gold Group has helped thousands of Americans protect their savings by converting an IRA or a 401k into an IRA in physical gold. All you got to do to get started and get a free no obligation info kit on gold is to text MVCR to 989898. Uh, Birch Gold has uh, also got an education approach to everything. That means uh, they have thousands of happy customers and countless five-star reviews. So protect your savings. Text MVCR to 989898 today. Okay, saw this story, and it says Florida sniper shoots bank robber through computer monitor in hostage situation. And this is a police sniper. David, you just saw the video. This happened in February. It was an unnamed 36-year-old man armed with a knife, claimed to have had a bomb, goes into this Bank of America branch in Fort Myers. Yeah. And as he's holding the two hostages, you can describe it. So he's got he's got a hostage like in the back of a room behind uh, computer monitors. Mm-hmm. And from sort of the POV of it, uh, like behind the police line, I couldn't even see where the sniper was at first. It took me a second because he's there in the room. But he's behind a wall of police officers, of SWAT units, and... and uh, there's a guy in front of him who appears to be like on a phone or checking a radio in his ear. His arm is up and his head, his hand is uh, sitting on his temple. Mm-hmm. And the guy's, the, the sniper's rifle barrel is on that dude's left shoulder. 
as he's taking aim to conceal right. the the sniper so that nobody gets gets you know nervous, and then he takes the shot through a computer monitor and puts it between the eyes of the guy. Dang! Boom! Drops him. Oh, daddy! I mean, well, that the, is... at one point during negotiations, he got physical. He started to put one of the hostages in a headlock, and he had the knife uh, to her throat. Mm. That was not to be messed with, and boom, just took him out. That man is the angel of death. My goodness. (laughs) Wow. That's movie stuff. (laughs) Exactly what I thought when I saw that video. It was like, wild man. Yeah. Glad he's one of the good guys for sure. (laughs) This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends, yep. Making sense of it all. Now I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. The Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Okay, so there was a pro-terrorist rally outside the White House. Yeah, openly pro-terrorist, by the way, because I know sometimes you say this about the so-called pro-Palestinian marchers, and people will say, why you come? They're at Hamas. No, they are. They'll tell you that they are pro-Hamas, and in this case, a pro-Hezbollah. There's a pro-terrorist rally outside of the White House over the weekend, and here's a, a moment captured by Tim Cast where they were, well, Chanting and praising uh, Hezbollah in this case. Oh boy. I don't know about y'all. I don't want to hear about Charlottesville ever again. Nope. No, man. Nope. <laughs> Well, Democratic Party is a terrorist problem. Yes, it's welcoming it's all there to is terrorists. To Absolutely. I mean, that's what we've and, been and, doing and, in the country. think otherwise, it's sticking your head in the sand. It's everywhere. And you can admit that or not admit that, but it's absolutely true. Well, because they're afraid of losing an election. They're afraid of losing part of their base. You know, there was a whole thing on the propaganda piece from ABC this morning about Europe, you know, Germany, France. These, you know far right wingers are trying to take over because they've had enough of the immigration they're not very immigrant friendly there no what's happened over time Mm -hmm. all these people have flooded into the country including a lot of muslims that doesn't mean every muslim is a problem but there's enough where it's causing serious problems and people are saying enough we've got to do something about this this is crazy yeah we got a bunch of terrorists in our midst I saw because uh, right-wing um, or conservative uh, 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 parties have had massive wins in the European Union uh, elections. Yep. And uh, in Politico, they quoted somebody as saying, this shows how perilous the uh, the state of democracy in the Western world is. So democracy is dependent on voting for socialists. That's what they say. They're changing the That's name insane. or the words of everything what the meaning is, and then brainwashing people Mm -hmm. that just sort of go along. Because I think most people are good-hearted people. They want the best for mankind, and they get duped into following these people. And then the next thing you know, you're welcoming terror cells all over the place. You get serious problems, man. Yes, you do. I mean, and we're seeing it. I mean, I don't know how many times, and I heard it again from people over the weekend, of seeing things in the country you never thought you would see. And when I think of that, more than anything, it was what happened after October 7th with the demonstrations yeah. going on in this country. It's like, <laughs> yes, people forget the Holocaust. Some people don't even know it ever happened. No. And you could go to 9-11. It's like it never happened. It's just sort of crazy that way. Um, meanwhile, our president, very fit, mentally fit. Yeah. They're still well, trying to sell that to people. In yeah. private, he is. You probably heard Chris Coon the other day. God, that yeah, guy. We, we had that audio where he's yeah. he's sharper than ever and only occasionally mixes up words like we all do. We all do that. Right. 
He does it multiple times a day. Yeah. Well, well, just during this little interview uh, when he was visiting a World War I cemetery in France, he mixed. Well, he was trying to go after Republicans for holding up military aid to Ukraine. Yeah. Whoops. The idea that we become semi-isolationists now, which some are talking about. I mean, the idea we had to wait all those months just to get the money for Iraq and we, because we were waiting. I mean, what? it's just, it just, it's not who we are. It's not who America is. Well, you got that line from Obama at the very end. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as far as Iraq, what? Ukraine? There was no way what? we were ever going to unite Ukraine. I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, Iraq, what? What? <laughs> Afghanistan. No way that was going to happen. You know all those people. Fit as a fiddle, he's sharp. Yeah, why? Well, he's engaged. I don't even understand why you would wonder whether or not the guy was losing a step or ten. Right. Exactly. I read a piece today. You know, that's not who we are. Right. Right. That's that's his line. He's stealing it. Uh, I read a piece today, though. It was about a guy wrote it about his mother, and how she was ninety years old and had been experiencing dementia for the last number of years, and it continually gets worse and worse and worse, Mm -hmm. and how they as a family got together and did some things that were unpleasant, but they needed to do it to protect their mother, the right thing. And that was to put her somewhere where that type of thing, you can handle it, Uh, people that are trained to be around it. When the family members could no longer do it, it was to take mom's car keys away, move her out of her house, which she lived in for all those years. you got to make those decisions. And he went on to say, but these Biden people are out of control. This old man is experiencing exactly what my mother did, and they're doing exactly the opposite. They're pushing him into another run as president. So you're saying a good family a good would family not. A good family would take their, per- they take their loved one, put their arm around him, and take him away. Well, you know what they'd say to that person? What's that? That's not who we are. <laughs> yeah, thanks, big ho. No, it's stay in power no matter what. Isn't that something, though? I mean, yes. it is absolutely true. We've said that, we said this the first go round. Damn Joe yes. Biden for this, you know? Yes. First doctor, lady doctor, whatever it is, David, that, you know. Doctor, first lady doctor. Thank you very much. But, I mean, these are shameful people. At the time, tell me if I'm wrong, I think the thought was sort of like, well, Joe's headstrong, and she's just going to let Joe be Joe. And now I think the thought is, Joe, you need to get out there. Yeah. I'll go do my part. I'll go sit down with Good Morning America, and I'll go sit down and do yeah. all this different stuff. But you got to do your part. And I'll cover my mouth and say, stand up. Yeah, right. Don't crap your pants. Yeah, she'll <laughs> lead him off the stage, point him in the right direction. Yeah. Like she's got a leash around him, like the dog at the dog park, you know, <laughs> pulling him one way so he goes that way. It's, yeah, you're it's going the crazy. wrong way, and he's shaking hands with Dude, ghosts. Dude, it's... And- it's- but, but it is. this. It's a sad commentary. I don't I, vote for a felon. Well, I totally forgot about this, but you mentioned the don't don't poop your pants thing. Yes. Because um, uh, last week, uh, he's at a, a D-Day anniversary commemoration in France, and uh, part of the ceremony, uh, everybody's standing up, and he starts to sit down. And no one else is sitting down. He's kind of looking around, and it does look like he's hovering, or I said at the time, it looks like my two-and-a-half-year-old when he's dumping out. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he, everybody else sat down, but it was just a very awkward moment for him as he was just deer in the headlights, didn't know what was going on. So the AP did a fact check on it and ran cover for Joe making a claim that I didn't see circulated widely. I know it was something that was claimed initially, but anyway, uh, and they said, well, we're debunking the idea that he was sitting down or something. You might be seeing a clip on social media that appears to show President Biden trying to sit in a chair that isn't there. The footage is from an event commemorating the 80th anniversary of D-Day. However, this video doesn't show the full context of the moment. It is cut right before the president sits down in a chair that very much exists. Plus, his chair is clearly visible for most of the video. In extended footage of the ceremony, you can see Biden look over his shoulder for the chair 
Pause and bend over while the next speaker is announced, and then take a seat. Edited clips like this have followed Biden throughout his presidency to support an ongoing narrative that he is mentally incompetent. They often misrepresent an innocent moment, banking on the hope that most people won't question what they see as they scroll through their feeds. In one past example, a video was cut to make it seem as though Biden abruptly left last year's Thanksgiving turkey pardoning ceremony at the White House. In reality, he spent several minutes speaking and taking photos with guests. Selection day is just five months away. So we'll continue fact-checking moments like this as the race heats up. Meanwhile, Donald Trump definitely said neo-Nazis were fine people. Anyway, I mean... <laughs> exactly. It's like, I saw a couple of people claim that he was sitting in an imaginary chair or something. And I, Well, yeah. I, the moment I saw the video, no, there's a chair behind him. The, the, the thing that's concerning is that he just sort of sat there hovering, looking he around. He hovers, yes. Like he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. It's like he started to sit before it was time to sit. And I don't know. D then he's thinking, uh, do I just sort of play this off and no. hopefully everybody sits here soon? Yeah. He was hovering, though. There's no, no I, question. I think he was skid marking. That's really what was going to be. If he stands I, I up, think... he's really worried about what's going to happen. Houston, we have touched cloth. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You know, and, you know, I think the thing about. And he made that noise where he goes. <laughs> this way. I remember when I was vice president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. Yeah, I know. Mm. We're all told. Yeah, I know. You know, so when all this happened the other day, I was off. So with family, we were reliving our kids' vacation memories from when they were little. In Wisconsin Dells. Oh, yeah. Good for you. And I'm getting texts. Did Biden crap his pants? I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> right. Huh? Right. Is this real? Yeah. I'm like, I don't have time to look at this right now. Yes. Because I was, you know, abusing my back going down these water slides. I have no business. I, the same saying kept going through my head doing this was Scott Robbins saying, we're all told we, we can no longer play, play the children's, children's games. games. That's right. The line from Moneyball. Yep. When I'm doing the loop-to-loop -loop slide. Oh, I got talking to that. Oh, gosh, yeah. dang. It's fast. It's fun. This is some fast slides. Anyway, we had talked about this a few months ago when we were talking 80s retro stuff and the restaurant Ponderosa came up along with Bonanza, because I worked at a Ponderosa in the Quad Cities. Lovingly referred to as Pondo. Pondo, yeah, yeah. Yes. And anyway, I mean, that was my meal for the entire time I worked there. I really didn't get groceries. I had one meal a day at Pondo because it was half price. I'm like, you know, the ribeye back in the day is pretty good. Yeah. So we're getting calls from different people after this saying, you know, there's still some Ponderosas out there. One was in Wisconsin Dells. I'll be. So I'm like, I'm going. And different people in the family. I don't know if I want to go there. And I just said, you're not invited. <laughs> I don't want to hear any griping and moaning. <laughs> I'm going to go get my Dad's rib. Going. Okay. <laughs> and so it's getting time later in the afternoon on Thursday. And, you know, we had already driven past it. You know, I think I even said, I'm home, baby. <laughs> Some nonsense just to make the family laugh a little. So it did look a little downtrodden. And I'm not here to just run down a restaurant. Okay. But I'm like, boy, I don't know. And I go online and I'm looking it up and I'm like, boy, this website doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? If the website looks like garbage, no. it still might be good. Right. Okay. Well, then I see some reviews pop up. Uh-oh. Okay. Mm. And then I checked, okay, m your brain does this or at least mine does sometimes. My half price ribeye was probably $4. All right. And I see the Pondo ribeye on the website for twenty eight ninety nine. Holy smokes! Like twenty eight ninety nine for a Pondo? Wow! No, Captain Thrifty not approving of that. No. So I'm like, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> and then I see the reviews. First review I see, all caps, from two months ago. I would highly recommend you stay away from this place. Ooh. <laughs> we used to have a Pondo by us when I was a kid. It was awesome. I'm like, preach, brother. Thought we would give it a try despite all the bad reviews. Just the way the outside of the building looks should make you get back in your car. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> Food is, all caps, not hot. Not it has hot. no flavor or seasoning and is unappealing. Don't know how this place passes a health inspection. As I'm writing this, my stomach is pretty upset with me. <laughs> like, holy smokes. Now I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go. The dream was killed. There were enough of the reviews. One of the worst I've ever been in. Not clean. Zero stars if I could. 
said somebody else. It will make you sad, mad, and depressed. Wow. <laughs> all right, that's all I needed. So no, no stopping no, there. No. Oh no. No, I did. I stopped it. I I actually walked in to see what it looked like. They did have some Pondo T-shirts for fourteen ninety nine. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Anyway, we got to move on. We got to get to our no BS election update and more straight ahead, right? It's what Michigan is all about. The opportunity to do more. The opportunity to connect with the best talent. The opportunity for people of all backgrounds to grow and expand their business. The opportunity to live and work in a state where paychecks go farther. The opportunity is now, and it's right here in Michigan. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio to discover all the ways the Michigan Economic Development Corporation is helping Michigan thrive. Hey there, you and aisle two. I see you by the fiber and laxatives. You still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain? If your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over-the-counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at linzess.com or call 1 800 L A N Z E S S. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. The Van Camp and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. It is time. Do it. It's the Markley Van Camp and Robbins 2024. 2024. Are you running? Are you not running? No BS update. Everything you need to know without all the crap. I'm not to do an research. Sure, buddy. Anybody seen the real clear politics betting averages in the last few days? Have no. not. Trump 50.7%, Biden 35.3%. Damn. Man, as it sits right now. And I'm looking at the battlegrounds. Wisconsin, Trump up 0.1%. Well, I'll just, spoiler alert, he's leading all of them. Arizona over 4 Georgia 48 Michigan, 0.3. Pennsylvania, 2.3. North Carolina, 5.3. Nevada, 5.3. Wow. Uh, Direction of country. On the wrong track, 65%. Yeah. This does not look good for Biden. No. Well, I, I wonder there's panic. I don't know if you saw the CBS News YouGov poll that dropped yesterday. Did not. There was some. Uh, now there there was some chatter about the fact that something like sixty two or sixty three percent of Americans support uh, mass deportations of illegal immigrants. Mm-hmm. And you know Margaret Brennan on CBS was like, "Well, do they even know what that really means?" And it's like, "Well, no, you don't know all the details of what an operation like that would look like." But we got a freaking problem, man. <laughs> Yep, and they they they're just flabbergasted by this. But there is something that's a- actually worse for Biden than the top line poll numbers. It is the question about main reason for supporting Biden. Um, now in March, thirty one percent said I like Biden. That's why I'm supporting Biden. Hmm. 
Now it's 27 percent. So it's gone down. Uh, Biden is the Democratic nominee. In March, it was 21 percent. And it's down to 19 percent now. To oppose Trump is by far the biggest reason why people would vote for Biden. Not a surprise. It was at 47 percent in March. And now that's up to 54 percent. So, I, I mean, you could say, well, maybe that shows some energy against Donald Trump and maybe that'll help Biden. And it may. But I see that as, man, that is a tall order to overcome because the, the circumstances right now are not the same as they were in 2020. It's a threat to democracy. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all they got right now. I just love solving problems. There we go. She's waiting. Warming up in the bullpen right now, getting hot. Mm-hmm. Nowhere in the betting markets, though, is Hillary Clinton. No. That's all Michelle Obama. She's still third in the betting markets. Isn't that something? Even though she says, want nothing to do with it. Yeah. But we shall see. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. Okay, biggest story today, David. Uh, biggest story of the day is that even though uh, Joe Biden signs this executive order last week that was supposed to limit the number of people who were coming across the border, uh, it hasn't done anything. And, in fact, uh, Border Patrol agents are being told to do the opposite of what the executive order is. <laughs> right. You just laugh because you shouldn't be surprised. No. But then when it actually happens, you're like, they actually freaking did that. Okay. Um, and Joe Biden, I'm sure this is going to win a lot of people over. Climate change is the only threat to humanity? I yeah. heard this. What? Okay. Golly. And AOC thinks Trump is going to throw her in jail. Good. Hope so. <laughs> Hope that's right. <laughs> we'll get to that much more straight ahead. Van Camp and Robin Show. I'm Jamie Markley, the Gen Xer, David Van Camp, the Millennial, the Sexy Boomer, Scott Robbins. So the only threat to humanity. Okay, th is this a misquote? I haven't heard the clip. No, it's real. Joe Biden, whose wife just took several trips to and from France. Yeah, she went back. She flew private, uh, 3,600 mile round trip in order to, uh, or trip rather. Uh, to go to Hunter Biden's um, uh, uh, trial yeah, and then flies back to France. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, Joe Biden is saying the rest of us need to sacrifice more in the name of fighting climate change. Okay. And the next central threat of climate change, which is just growing greater, we're working together to accelerate the global transition to net zero. It is the existential threat to humanity, among the only existential threat to humanity. The only. Including nuclear weapons, is if we do nothing on climate change. Hold on a second. Man, oh, man, oh, man. The, the only, only. Yes. Including nukes? Well, he threw yes. that in there. Yeah, at the end. So climate change and nukes. And nukes. That's it. Okay. The only existential threat. Okay. Those two things. That's it. Nothing else. What about white supremacy? Hey. That's just the United States. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, tomor <laughs> that's tomorrow's threat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, all this stuff with the climate, I go back to a few things. One, and this was a couple of years ago, was Thomas Sowell. The great Thomas Sowell. Mm -hmm. um, when this happened years ago. I think it's a classic example of the uh, need for crusades. Now, people, many people are shocked by these emails. I'm not at all shocked by them. I read, I read the original UN study years ago, and I was just curious as to how they were going to deal with the question that the uh, temperatures went up first, and then there was the increase in carbon, di carbon dioxide. Global warming! You can't say that A causes B if B happened first. <laughs> and so I read this, and I could see they were, they were tiptoeing through the tulips and the way they <laughs> phrased things and so forth. They, they couldn't confront that. And, and now we're finding out uh, that they, they knew darn well they couldn't deal with all the evidence. Right. But then it just sort of changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things have been corrected over the last... 12 months of things people had said for years, the quote experts. But then you never hear that. 
Legacy media never covers that no. stuff of how they were wrong on any number of different things. No, instead. And that's they... not to say it hasn't gone up a degree, but there are different things that you can do. But they want crisis because they can profit off of that. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. Well, just last week, the transportation secretary suggested that uh, the flight where the severe turbulence happened and a bunch of people got injured and one person had right. a heart attack. Pete Buttigieg blamed climate change for turbulence. Yes. It's true. Never been turbulence or a mishap with a plane before. <laughs> what? Oh, boy. By the way, if you were the president of a country, say, in a war, and you're fighting for your lives, okay, how big of an issue do you think climate change would be to you at that time? That uh, would be bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the list. That's what I would think. Yeah. You too? Yeah. This is, to me, like, it was... <laughs> Another example that what a scam the globalists have going. When Zelensky from Ukraine actually said this about climate change from what, last fall? We have to stop it. <laughs> we have to. Humanity is failing on its climate policy objectives. <laughs> this means that extreme weather will still impact the normal global life and some evil. You're worried about extreme weather right now? Yeah. I don't well, believe it, dude. Well, here, here's the thing. Whenever Zelensky meets with Joe Biden, it really right. does look like like the, the, the grandson who's really worried about getting cut out of the will. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to go and talk to Grandpa. Let him tell me some stories back in from back in 1952 and all that, you know. Um, and that's really what this is. I'm all on board with the climate change scam. I'm, I'm totally on board with all. Because I'm a good little boy. Don't cut me out of the will. Keep giving me money. Yes, I'll say whatever you want. State will also weaponize its outcomes. <laughs> yes. We need to be worried. Okay, whatever, dude. Uh, who is calling Biden Ruth Bader Biden now? Who came up with that? <laughs> this is really that's pretty funny. funny. I like well, that. Th this was in the Atlantic, actually. A liberal really? writer was saying, no, I, I, he doesn't like Donald Trump, and he thinks Trump is a threat to democracy and all that stuff. Apparently, that was something Bill uh, uh, <laughs> Bill Maher uh, said about uh, Joe Biden, Ruth Bader Biden. And this guy dovetails off of that and says, well, there is a broader thematic reality for the president. Bad vibes have been the persistent feature of his campaign. Here we go with his bad <laughs> vibes. <laughs> not vibes. <laughs> it's that he's uh, like objectively bad at being president, like many people. I've made the unwelcome comparison between Biden and Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late liberal icon whose legacy was stained by her unwillingness to retire while Barack Obama was still president. Um, Biden's conduct is far worse than Ginsburg's, in fact, given the awesome power of the presidency and the havoc Trump could unleash it with it this time. Um, <laughs> I, ju I just wonder, because, I mean, look, I I'm not saying that everybody, uh, that the Atlantic really gets to direct policy, but they do have an influence because their audience is generally wealthier liberals um, True. who do read this stuff. And, and uh, Mark Leibovich, I, I believe, is the author of this uh, piece, again, basically saying w w Democrats have to figure something out because there are a lot of vulnerabilities. And my only response is, who do you have? The entire reason that Joe Biden was even the nominee in 2020 was because they took a look at the most diverse and energetic field in political history and realized that Americans hated it. Their own voters hated it. Cory Booker, gone. Yeah. Kamala, gone. Buttigieg, gone. Newsom. He didn't run for president. He wanted to. Yeah, but I mean, he wasn't out there campaigning Talking about the like these other people. Campaign. That no, the failed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and so then it's like, okay, well, we can't let Bernie Sanders uh, be the nominee because he's openly socialist. We like to stay in the closet. Mm -hmm. um, and so, all right, people are fine with Joe Biden. That's that's what it came down to. It was they were okay with Joe Biden. Yeah, uh, I won that bet. Thank you. Yeah. And and so yeah, and so so everything else failed. And so now again, the only other person could be Hillary Clinton. Yep. And. May I? Th maybe she has a better chance. I uh, ultimately, I don't know. No. I think if I w if I were a Democrat and I was running the show, 
Is it between the guy who could credibly be uh, uh, described as having pooped his pants in France last week? Or is it Hillary Clinton? I, I would go with Hillary Clinton if I had the kind of sway in the Democrat Party to wave a magic wand. I'd feel way better about that. It'd be interesting to see what she would say as far as immigration goes. Like, we got to be done with this. Yeah. Like, it would be like a hardline stance. Oh, she went back to Bill's stance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. I don't know that she would play patty cake with the far left the way Biden has. No, and, and honestly, that would probably help. <laughs> that's that's what I would be afraid of. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think would be concerning. Boy, like, she, it, like, she would have AOC, you know, starts whining about whatever. I don't see Hillary just cut time. Maybe she would. Yeah, I don't know. But AOC, David, you're saying, switching gears here, is afraid she's going to get thrown in jail yeah. by Trump. Well, Alexandria Man. Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat representative out of New York, uh, she's mentally ill. Uh, she was doing an interview with Kara Swisher, and she was asked, what might happen if Trump gets reelected? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it sounds nuts, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy threw me in jail. <laughs> really? He's out of his mind. How? I mean, he did his whole first campaign around lock her up. Like, this is his motto. Oh, he didn't say that, you know. He said he didn't say that. Said, <laughs> yeah, right? He, that? Yeah. Um, he could have. He didn't do it. Anyway. He, I take him at his word. I take him at his word. I take, I take him at his word when he says that he's going to round up people. I take him at his word when he yeah. threatens journalists. I take him at his word. Uh, I feel like what we saw in his first presidency was an amuse bouche to what his intentions are. He has learned from his <laughs> mistakes of appointing professionals, and he will not make that mistake next time. Go ahead, Scott. An amused Bush. Yeah. Help yeah. me out on that one. Uh, it's a it's a French term for an appetizer, basically. Okay. Literally means amuses the mouth. I think that's a Trump campaign ad. But her saying that? Him saying it. I'm going to throw her in jail. Donald Trump. Oh, I thought you... <laughs> I thought you have her, meant no, have, to saying have amused her bouche. Say, have, well, that, <laughs> nobody knows what that is. So I'm just saying, I think, if you ran that, if you ran her that bite saying it, I think he's going to throw me in jail. You can have Trump going, I will throw her in jail. Donald Trump, a president for tomorrow. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's the I one can't more get reason past to vote for him. The amused Bush thing. It sounds like a rat album. Like a <laughs> reunion <laughs> record. The new and one. I'm up for it. Let's go. From rat. <laughs> yes. Amused Bush. <laughs> Twenty twenty four tour. It's it sounds very U two ish too though. I suppose. You know, just too smart for their own good kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Did you see the story about scammers? What they're doing now? This is different. This is a new thing if you're a small business owner. Here's cause for concern. Is this AI related? Sort of. Gosh dang it. Yeah, this was out of the Wall Street Journal. Um, basically, you can copycat a small business, their website. You can use images of the actual owner. Dang. And then you can steer customers to like either cheap knockoffs or just take their money. And in the story, I'm going through this, I see this these items called B cups. I don't know if you've ever seen them before. Thirsty pollinators. They're oh. like these little cups, hmm. and they're for bees to go in and pollinate. You fill them with water. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm not into it, but I could see where people would buy these. I can see my wife saying, oh, those are cute. That well, would be really yeah. cool. Got a little bee problem. Yeah. And so Jen Rose, a person that makes these, um, they're tiny porcelain vessels, hold water for bees. Um, has about 50 retail partners, okay? Most of her handmade cups are sold through her website, and they're priced anywhere from 20 bucks to 200 okay? Wow. This past April, hundreds of fake listings started popping up on Amazon and other shopping platforms using her face and her images and videos to then steal customers. Dang. They, B-Cups... This Jen Rose, she now gets like 25 emails a day from people complaining that the watering cups they received are plastic. Like, these aren't porcelain. This is plastic. This right. is garbage. She said, they're taking my images that show my face to and my employees, and they're being translated into Dutch and Swedish and put out overseas. 
And then they send them cheap crap and they get the money. But people are complaining to her. They're totally scamming her. So, yeah, it's there's so many different things. The way they do this with socks, like special socks, yeah, all geez. sorts of stuff. It's just something else to be worried about. And part of the story is because of AI and chatbot, all that stuff, it's very easy now in the listings. It used to be Amazon could root through these pretty quickly and find out who the scams were, but not as much anymore. And if you're a small business, you just don't have the manpower to look through all that stuff. Yeah, brick and mortar's making a comeback. <laughs> don't have to deal with that crap. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the stories out there. Did you guys hear anything about the bride that was thrown from a truck while lying on a mattress trying to secure the mattress the day before she was getting married? It's like they were moving to a new place, fiancé oh, no. and husband-to-be. So put the mattress in the back of the pickup. Because we've talked about this, Scott, when we were kids, especially me. I rode oh, yeah, the back of the pickup well, yeah. all the time. We all did, yeah. She's on the mattress. They're going 50 down the road. Boom, she pops out with the Ooh. mattress. Luckily, okay enough to have the wedding the next day. So they did an interview with the bride and groom just check this out wasn't really thinking just was thinking of the fastest possible way to get the mattress from a to b which just happened to be throwing the mattress in the back and putting Liddy on top that sounds great i'll just hold the mattress down in the back of the truck i remember the whole thing other than landing i flew oh. out just screaming um and then i remember just rolling on the street i'm looking in my rearview mirror and i see my fiance rolling away from me first thought was that she had died oh my gosh dude well it's all scraped up everything else ratchet wow. straps are not expensive you can go get them yeah but do you really need them well yes is it is it <laughs> is it better than getting blown out of the yes, back of a truck going 50 miles an hour <laughs> here's the very last part of this a lot of people were able to overlook the stupidity and really come and support both of us in the time that we needed it that's nice that they overlooked it yeah, some of the marital activity on that mattress ain't gonna happen for a while <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad they're all right yeah me too oh my gosh they're really bad okay hey uh you want to hear Robbins go off? Kaitlin Clark, not on the Olympic team. It's okay. <laughs> Get to that and much more straight ahead right here. It's no secret, when you spend less money on running your business, you get to keep more money. It's simple math. And that can be a tall order right now because everything is so expensive. That's why smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. Reduce costs and headaches with the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, all into one platform and one source of truth. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required you improve efficiency by bringing all of your major business processes into one platform slashing manual tasks and errors over 37,000 companies have already made the move, so you do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. By popular demand, NetSuite has extended its one-of-a-kind flexible financing program for a few more weeks. Head to NetSuite.com slash MVR. NetSuite.com slash MVR. NetSuite.com slash MVR. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Right. 
The Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. Said it before, it's no secret. You spend less money on running your business, you get to keep more money. It's simple math. Yeah, and I know the vibes out there are so bad that it seems like your money's <laughs> yeah. not going as far as it used to. Huh, weird. Yeah. Everything is so expensive. Maybe that's just a vibe thing. But if it's not, well, you can be like many other smart businesses, graduate to NetSuite by Oracle. In case you haven't noticed, too, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up there on the screen, along with NASDAQ. And then you've got the vibe, too. Right. That, that they're showing that as well now. You can reduce the costs and headaches with the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. Yep, with NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud. No hardware required. So you improve efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. More than 37,000 companies have already made the move. You do the math, see how you'll profit with NetSuite. By popular demand, NetSuite has extended their one-of-a-kind flexible financing program, too. Just for a few more weeks, head to NetSuite.com slash MVR. That's NetSuite.com slash MVR. When I came in today, Scott, you were talking about Kalen Clark not making the U.S. Olympic team. Ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. So dumb. Because the only reason people cared about any of this was because of her. She brought eyeballs to it, butts in the seats, all of those things you need to be successful. Has she been good enough so far? Yes. Yes. So she tied the record for seven threes in a game. She's been named as an alternate, by the way. That's breaking news. Now an alternate. Yes. So the blowback was such. Yeah, yes, but. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. This is the Mark Lee Van Camp and Robin Show. Are you ready? Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends. Yep. Making sense of it all. Now I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. The Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Corrine Jean-Pierre, it seems like it's been a while. Yeah, well, uh, they have called on her to speak to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, uh, to talk about the value of communicating clearly and effectively, especially during a time of crisis. The single worst... You're serious right now. I am dead serious. She is the single worst communicator I've ever seen in politics. No question. And... (laughs) <laughs> I'm just, I'm honestly trying to think one that's been worse, and I can't. I mean, you could say now, current day Joe Biden, but that's because he's got dementia. Yes. Like, it, as an example, remember when Sean Spicer first took that gig? He yeah. was under immense pressure, and he did not perform the best. He's light years ahead of her. Like, not even close. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I can't think we of We all that. know why she's there. Well, yes. I mean, please. Biden said he wanted to have the most diverse administration ever. Yeah. And, well. And he got it. You got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also one of the worst, but okay, let's hear this. Now, when I address the press from the White House podium, the only thing that stands between me and getting our message out to the American public is whether the people sitting in those chairs and the folks watching at home feel like they can trust me, feel like the information that I am providing is worthy for them, and that they can trust, obviously, that information. No, we don't. No. That's incredible. No one trusts you. No. Unintended comedy right there. No, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, that's silly. Okay. Nobody thinks that. Mm. Well, no. No. I mean, you sent that clip, David. What was your reaction when you heard it? Well, it's... It's not about trust. It's about trying to decipher what the hell she's saying most of the time. Well, a lot of times she has to go back to her notebook. And doesn't do that more than well. More than anybody that we've ever seen. And sometimes she will answer a question that wasn't asked. You'll hear the question, and then she'll read off something else. You don't know exactly what's going on. I mean... I don't know how much time you want to spend on this. We could go to the vault. Oh, let's go to the vault. 
Let's see. We'll have you uh, pick a few here if you want. Um, let's see. Uh, we go June 22. Was that the Putin price hike? Oh, oh yeah. You remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, recession. What is a recession? Um, all these different things. Here, let's just go one with Ducey and Cream Jean Pierre. I mean, because there's so many of them, just roll it. Here we go. So, then why is it the White House officials are trying to redefine recession? No, we're not redefining recession. <laughs> if we all understand a recession to be two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth in a row, and then you have White House officials come up here to say, no, 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 that's not what a recession is. <laughs> it's something else. How is that not redefining recession? Because that's not the definition. That is not the definition. Brian Deese said in 2008, of course, <laughs> economists have a technical definition which is of a recession, which is two. And he goes through it. I can tell and you this. He said two, <laughs> two negative quarters of GDP growth is not the technical definition of a recession. It what is not. Changed? It is not. Why did he say that? It, it is was? not. I can I can speak to I can speak to you to what he said yesterday in front of all of you, which is the last thing that you just repeated. Oh my gosh. There are many factors. There are many factors, economic factors, and indicators to consider, uh, and. <sighs> I will say that uh, the textbook definition of recession is not is not two negative quarters of GDP. We have a strong labor market. We have business that's investing. We have consumers. Uh so trust is a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, trust is a very big yeah. deal. <laughs> that's a great one. That's not, that's yes. not even one of the best no, ones. I, I that's just one of many. You just keep rolling if you want to. Food and price hike is still one of my all-time favorites because that was a... That just never caught on because it wasn't true. No. The one I remember when she was trying to talk about the border and she got tied up in knots, at oh, least yeah. that's my yeah. memory. Sometimes it doesn't pay off as well as you think it was going to, but I think this does. What we stand by is that we are doing everything that we can uh, to make sure that, um, uh, that we follow the process that's been put forth. That's why we have uh, historic funding uh, to do just that, to make sure that, um, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, to make oh, sure golly. that, um, to make sure that uh, the folks that we encounter at the border be removed uh, or expelled. That's sad. It's it, like those, those animated robot smoke starts coming out of there. <laughs> well, I just wonder, like, so she's... Uh, the, the the initial clip that we played where she's saying, you know, talking about how important it is to be trustworthy, yeah. to speak authoritatively, mm -hmm. especially during an emergency. Now, you know, just in my life as a news reporter, I've interacted with uh, FEMA communications people, and there are many of them who do a fantastic job trying to manage and and a, a dicey situation and try to get needed information out to the public as quickly as possible. Some are better than others, but that's life. I got to think that some of those communicators are in attendance there and know the body of work of one Kareem Jean-Pierre and think, I am not going to take notes from a lady who speaks like she was kicked in the back of the head <laughs> by a mule as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they got to be going, are you kidding me? <laughs> this, is like, this is like Keith Richards trying to give a guitar lesson to Eddie Van Halen. I was going to say, this is like me with a touring musician saying, all right, when you get into the solo, yeah. all right, you have your repertoire of licks that you can go to, but you kind of want it to sing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you, here's what you want to go to when you're going for feeling. And some guy's looking at me going, you're a chop. <laughs> you suck. I'm going to take tips from you. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I'm going to go be the hitting coach for the Texas Rangers. See right. you later. I've played video games. <laughs> I'm good at it, man. You play guitar like your fingers are broken. Shut up. <laughs> okay. You had another piece of audio. This was from uh, Texas Democrats? Yeah, the Texas Democrats had the big meeting, and uh, one of the guys was talking about public education because school choice has been a big deal in not only Texas but all around the country. There's been a huge revolution uh, underway when it comes to giving vouchers for private schools, letting people get out of failing government schools mm -hmm. uh, and democrats in texas have been fighting tooth and nail and unfortunately several republicans have helped them uh along the way uh halt the school choice option up to now so they're panicked about it the house democratic party uh caucus chair 
is a guy named Trey Martinez Fisher. His actual name is Ferdinand Frank Fisher the <laughs> third. But he's Ferdinand from, Frank Fisher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ferdinand Triple F. Frank Fisher the third, aka <laughs> Trey Martinez Fisher. Um, yeah. He's from San Antonio. He had to, he had a rep to protect. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> That's your pretenders, Good. man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, he was talking about why we need public education and why we can't do anything to upset the apple cart. Okay. The tragedy. The tragedy is we can never catch up in public education. And that is the equalizer. That is the equalizer for all of us. You cannot ever have your education taken away from you. He sent his kids to private school, by private the way. Private school. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, they yeah. all do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I know he goes by Trey Martinez Fisher, but Ferdinand was like, I don't want my kids mixing with the poors. Heck no. <laughs> with with those teachers? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want any of that. That's great. Did you see the dude that got stopped by the, P- the TSA? Had a bag full of spam. Spam? Yes. <laughs> The meat product? Yes. For what? <laughs> well, you had a whole bag full of What's it. What's he going to do? Are you going to eat it all? <laughs> well, Gross. okay, you got to understand. He's from Massachusetts. He visited the Spam Museum uh, in Austin, Minnesota. Yeah. So he had a bunch of Spam. Mm. Some classic Spam cans. Yeah. Yes. And, well, and there's flavors you can't get everywhere. Well, sure. As he's trying to tell the TSA agent. Like, what do you got going on here? Man? It's all it's a case of spam that I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Regular flavor. No, they're like the special flavors. Wow. I put the Hawaii special edition in there. No, they don't have any of these here. So. I know. I got to get there's a teriyaki one in there. That's pretty good. So I'm excited. Okay, right, so. I don't know if it's extra soy in that spam, not enough protein. I'm not quite sure exactly, but not he seems salt. to like it. Yeah. You something? <laughs> okay, so I've got to do a quick test on these parts of Of course. <laughs> They're straight from the factory. <laughs> okay. Yum. Cabbage spam, banana spam. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is unsettling when you find somebody just carrying around meat spam. products with them. Yeah. I had somebody that, that, that stayed at our house for uh, a little while. They were visiting in town. They were doing a road trip thing anyway. Um, and I go into the, uh, the guest room to give her a towel, um, and I see her purse is open, and she's got cans of Hormel chili in her purse. And I'm like, why does she have cans of Hormel chili? That's very odd. That is odd. And then when she left, I go, and there were empty cans of Hormel chili hidden kind of underneath the guest bed. <laughs> Like, she was there in the middle what? of the night and just had a hankering for Hormel chili. Okay, man. Well, <laughs> I can't say anything. This is obviously someone, either a close friend or family member. No, it's a freak show thing, man. I don't know. Okay, what, all right. I mean, then, say what you, what's on your mind. I'm just thinking, oh, my gosh, could you imagine? Say someone, Scott, you start dating, and they've got this Hormel chili in their purse, and then they leave empties behind. <laughs> You're going to run, aren't you? <laughs> One and done, baby. <laughs> like, They're not coming back to my place ever. Like, like what do you have? Hormel chili in your purse. I'm done. We have food in the kitchen. If you're hungry, you can go to the Gosh, ki- Hell, we've got some Hormel chili in the pantry if you want some. I don't know yeah, what the psychology behind that is. I don't know, man. That's, yeah. Like, okay, if, if like you got a problem with food and you're like sneaking but, chocolates or you're you're a smoker and you're sneaking smokes, you're sneaking Hormel chili. The other thing is, there were no spoons in the room. I think she drank it right out of the can. Oh, my god! Like Popeye with yeah. spinach just emptying the whole can. <laughs> Israel Hamas, the latest straight ahead. We recently had some monumental news that no one is talking about. For the first time in our history, the interest we pay on the national debt surpassed every individual budget item except Social Security. That's right. The U.S. now spends more on interest than on national defense or even Medicare. And it's only getting worse as big government keeps printing and spending more money. That's why savvy investors, central banks, and concerned savers are turning to gold, something not tied to the inflated U.S. dollar. You can, too, with the help of Birch Gold. For over 20 years, Birch Gold Group has helped thousands of Americans protect their savings by converting an 
IRA or 401k into an IRA in physical gold. To find out more, text MVCR to 989898 and claim your free, no obligation info kit on gold. Birch Gold has an education first approach, which is why they have thousands of happy customers and countless five star reviews. Protect your savings. Text MVCR to 989898 today. That's MVCR to 989898. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. All right. The Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. So I was looking at different coverage of what happened with Israel and Hamas over the weekend with the rescue of these hostages Uh and celebrations going on in Israel. And it's interesting the way this is being portrayed. I'll just play you little parts of the coverage. This was ABC This Morning. Roll it. This morning... Video showing the ferocity of Israeli airstrikes, which accompanied a huge military operation to free four hostages being held in Gaza by Hamas. Yes, and there was good news. Noah Agamani hugging her father shortly after her rescue. Noah seen pleading for her life on October 7th as she was taken by Hamas at the Nova Music Festival. Also rescued 27-year-old Andrei Kozlov, 41-year-old Shlomi Ziv, and 22-year-old Amog Mirjan, whose father tragically died just hours before he was freed. Not much mention of the hostages from the United States, and I know mm. people wonder, are they alive, all of that. But anyway, it goes on. Israeli special forces disguised as local Palestinians moving into two buildings where the hostages were being held. The call sign for when they were freed was, we have the diamonds. Then they were helicoptered out of Gaza with Israel celebrating. Only one Israeli policeman was killed. Okay, before it goes on, because they had planned this for months. Mm -hmm. Quite an operation. Well, yeah. The video of the aftermath revealing entire buildings raised to the ground. More than 270 Palestinians killed during the raid and nearly 700 injured, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. Yeah. The bodies of men, women and children lying on the ground outside the Al-Aqsa Hospital, the injured overflowing its hallways. But one woman saying two of her cousins were killed, two others seriously injured. They did not commit any sin. They were sitting at home, she says. The IDF disputing Hamas's casualty figures and defending its operation to our Martha Raddatz. Okay, before we get to Raddatz, your thoughts on what you've heard so far? Well, th- this is the problem when you're dealing with Hamas, which holds up in civilian territory. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's, it's what happens. It's a war. And they know civilians get killed then the propaganda grows and news organizations around the world and carry the water for them they know exactly what's going to happen so here's raditz tell me why those airstrikes were were necessary why buildings were destroyed in that attack the forces came under fire from a 360 degree threat Uh, rpgs ak-47s Uh, explosive devices on the way, mortar rounds. It was and is a war zone. And so civilians in that is the tragedy of civilians being caught up in this is precisely because of how Hamas is battling us on the battleground. It's the same story. Yeah. That part's never changed. But you know who's under fire now. But the hostages rescue not calming pressure on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu for his handling of the war. Overnight, Benny Gantz, a key member of Israel's war cabinet, resigning from the coalition government and calling for elections. Is he a key member, really? Just ask. I don't, I don't know. Depends on who you would yeah, talk I to. Mean, yeah, I, I, but you know who agrees with him? 
And like President Biden, guys, Benny Gantz has called for a deal to end the war and free dozens of remaining hostages, including Americans. Secretary of State Blinken arriving here in Israel today to meet Netanyahu. They won't agree to it. And they could yeah. do it tomorrow. They could do it now. They could have done it months ago. Yeah, absolutely. They won't agree to it. Well, well, okay, cease fire. Hey, stop it, stop it. Stop shooting. Here come the hostages. Yeah. But, but you know, it's not going to happen, and it's never going to happen. And, you know, again, I mean, I don't remember civilian casualties. They're always a part of it, and it's sad, man. I hate it when it happens, but it happens. It happened in World War II. It happened in Vietnam. It happened everywhere. So are they supposed to not right. try to go just, in and get the hostages out? Just go, oh, well, we're done. We can't right. do this anymore. Well, of course, you have to. And there's going to be civilian casualties, and it sucks. It's terrible. Yeah. They get frustrated, man. Um, because it, then the report goes on because Blinken, you know. Senior White House correspondent Selena Wang is tracking the administration's <laughs> latest efforts to bring about a ceasefire. Good morning, Selena. Hey, good morning, Michael. The president urgently wants an end to this war. His team is doubling down on a ceasefire deal. As you say, Secretary of State Blinken just landing in Egypt. Then he heads to Israel, trying to push that agreement forward. Now, this comes as Israel faces criticism for the high civilian death toll in that latest raid. U.S. officials say that they did provide intelligence to support that mission, but there was no U.S. military support. So, hey, uh, you people in Dearborn, please vote for us. All right, exactly. Uh, hmm. Watch, we're doing something. Look, we're doing something. Trying to do that dance. It's just embarrassing. Ugh. Oh, I know. So then, you know, blinking. Like he's going to have any sway with Netanyahu. I wonder what Netanyahu really thinks of Tony Blinken. Likes it. <laughs> I'm sure it's hilarious. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin show. All right, biggest story today, David. Well, that's a pretty big one. And I find it really disturbing that Israel is constantly being asked to defend its actions in this war. Like I know. It's not, it's not every day that you see that, that you see a U.S. ally uh, that is in the middle of a war, and at every turn, the U.S. government just openly questions everything it does, and in some cases, condemns everything they do. Yes. Well, if... <laughs> If it were up to our government right now, those hostages would still be held because the ceasefire would have happened a long time ago. I mean, they live in some fantasy land. I don't get it. All right. We got another news update and the Robin's trifecta straight ahead. Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. I'm Jamie Markley, the Gen Xer, the millennial David Van Camp, the sexy boomer. That's Scott Robbins. Maybe you saw the transgender contestant was crowned Miss Maryland. What? Yes. Miss Maryland, USA. Okay. And kind of an odd statement, at least to me. Um, saying this victory is a delicious invitation for LGBTQ plus alphabet kids to be themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Her talent was arm wrestling. <laughs> you made that up. Boom. I have no idea. Do they still do the talent part? I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. At different parts, I can't follow the different, you know, pageants. For a while, I think they decided, you know, we're not, we're just going to bypass the talent. It was just for show anyway. Right. We just get on with it. I'm not quite sure. Um, a lot of people were saying, you know, I felt bad for the other ladies there. Then other people had to take, you know what? Those ladies should have walked off. Mm -hmm. You know, just stand there and clap for this nonsense. You bail. Right. You don't give it any dignity. What do you think? Well, I think so, but they won't. I mean, some do. Um, some might, yeah. There were middle school girls in West Virginia that just walked off the court. Well, earlier this year, yep, yeah, we're not doing this. I think there's so much social pressure to accept at that age and even even older. But don't you feel like it's turning? Oh, I, I have. There's a story I read today that yeah, it is actually. Yeah, there's a new Pew Research poll out. Yeah, I I, I think because 
you know, when it's something that's theoretical and, you know, years ago when people were kind of trying to figure out, like, what is this? You don't want to exclude anybody. You know, you want to say, okay, well, you know, let's see. And then you see it getting more and more common. And then reality hits you in the face like a sledgehammer. And you realize how absurd the whole thing is. I've heard some <clears throat> liberals saying, you know, that uh, Donald Trump in 2012 personally overruled the committee to allow trans competitors in 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 this competition in the beauty pageant they are like okay but 2012 was kind of a different time and i remember there was a quote from uh uh, donald trump actually uh maybe last year when somebody asked him about that and he goes well i mean years ago uh, you know i was kind of the the quote that always rings in my ears is he goes What's all this all about? <laughs> yeah. And that's right. where that's where most of us were. Like, you go back 10, 12 years, most of us were like, it's kind of weird. What else is on television? And that's kind of it. That's where it mm-hmm. stayed. And then you see how ridiculous everything has gotten, and you're allowed to change your mind about things. Yeah, when you actually see it in front of you. Like yes. this And the these are all the repercussions. Now you know what this means. Because I remember, you know, 10 years ago when we would talk about this. And nobody's going to try to go into a women's bathroom. Oh, Stop yeah. Stop with well, all the fear. We were told that you were you're just being ridiculous. Right. That's ridiculous. That's, you know. Yes. Then, then it did happen, didn't it? Well, speaking of the whole pride thing. There was a clip, Jordan Peterson. Oh, I saw this. Fox Digital. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right clip, but he he explains it pretty well, saying, uh, at least for him, he was just, he's done with it. Just done with it. Is this the clip? So there's a lot of house cleaning to do on the pride side of things. Yes, this is part of it. Yeah. I'm just done with it. I don't like the flag. I think it's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every bloody week. I don't know who makes those decisions. I don't like the acronym and all the mystery surrounding it. I don't like the fact that the LGBT agenda, whatever that is, increasingly dominates the school system. I don't like the fact that it's targeted at young people. And I think the surgery... The gender affirming care movement, I think it is Nazi Auschwitz level awful that they should not only stop and now, as they've decided to do in the UK and in most places in Europe, but I think all the people that were involved in the surgical transition of minors should be imprisoned. Yes, that was the clip. The left is and, losing credibility yeah. on a lot of these well, issues. Yeah, and I, I, you know, that's like a five-minute clip. Yeah. And there's another no, no. part where he talks about yeah. nothing against gay people. That's not that's that's not because if you just play one clip, people say well, he's anti-gay. No, that's not what he's talking about. It's like the entire thing now. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it is getting ridiculous to the point of uh, you're seeing stories constantly about pride murals, which are for some reason drawn on the street. And then people will do burnouts with them or whatever. In Spokane, a bunch of teenagers did donuts on them. In, of course in, in those they are. Scooters and the motorized scooters. Yeah. And many of them were arrested. And because apparently, yeah, it, they treat it like it's heresy or something because it is the official state religion now in liberal bastions. Now, Lime, that's the company that makes a lot of these rentable motorized scooters. Mm hmm. They have now geofenced the pride mural there. So if you, <laughs> what that means is that if you're on that scooter, because it tracks you with the app, and you go near that pride mural that's on a road, the scooter shuts down. <laughs> you cannot drive a scooter on the road <laughs> if it goes over Dang. the pride mural. <laughs> that's so hilarious. Wow. <laughs> I, bet that's, too. Yeah. I bet that's the case. Yeah. Unless you're here illegally. Then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. That's only for U.S. Yes. citizens, okay? Yes. Well, you can steal the scooter first and then go do it. Right. Was yeah. it the Babylon Bee that said they, somebody found a workaround is that they made tire tracks in the Pride mural that spelled out free Gaza? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. There you go. Gotta love the bee. All right, you ready for your big three? Sure. Are you ready? One, two, three. Buckle my shoe off. 
It's the three most important news stories of the day. I hit the trifecta. Well, at least according to Scott Robbins. It's the trifecta on the Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. Every day about this time, the Scott Robbins trifecta helped by his hero. I'm Casey Casey. Hey, how'd you enjoy your vacation with Mr. Markley? Yes. Casey, did you? We, it's separate. It's always. That's the you way. You guys that go goes. together. That's why he's not here when you're gone. I'm ready. He's not going to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it at all, does he? Three. Three had fun, but okay. (laughs) Number three, uh, Bill. I miss you. (laughs) No, you didn't. (laughs) Uh, Bill, in the state of Illinois, uh, removed some mandate. This is crazy. Illinois Bill removes mandate to report positive drug test of newborns to law enforcement. Stark reminder of the Democrat Party in the state of Illinois, more than willing to abandon even the most basic of moral decencies in an effort to protect the outrageous the Illinois state legislator is now posed to send a bill to Illinois governor JB tub of goo Pritzker that removes a mandate that the Department of Children and Family Services must report newborn babies positive drug tests to law enforcement Pritzker is expected to sign it the he they're saying now that well if, if this is law if there's reporting that has to happen, it's mandated that a child is born as a drug addict because the mother was, then the mother won't seek prenatal care. She'll oh, be too afraid to do that. Oh, my God. You Bad people. Girls. <laughs> yeah. They, these people are the worst people on the planet. Golly. you got to protect the people who cannot protect themselves. A newborn baby cannot protect themselves. So it's okay to send that baby home to a drug-addled mother. That's perfectly fine. Couldn't one make the argument that might be the best thing for the baby to make sure that's reported? Yes. Of course it is. And, um, yeah, uh, the I forget what the title of it is. The largest uh, hospital system in Massachusetts just did this as well, where Heard they're not that. doing it. And last week, there was a big story about um, maternal death in America and how much higher it is here in the last few years uh, than it is in other developed nations. And what they don't tell you, uh, the vast majority, like two-thirds of those deaths happen after the baby is born. So you're not talking about women dying during childbirth. For the most part, it's sometime in in the year following giving birth. But that's not what they say. It's access to care. Yeah, they say it's because there are care deserts, and particularly it's acute in the uh, African-American community. Mm -hmm. What they don't tell you, and you have to really dig for the data, the vast majority of the deaths are drug overdoses. And it's because then you've got somebody who's a drug addict who then a lot of times they are single moms. They don't have a support system around them, and they're using drugs and, and have the pressures of being a single mom. And then they die of a drug overdose. Not reporting it will lead to that number rising. Because if you can get that kid out of the hands of the drug addict while she seeks treatment, then that's the best thing for the kid. But And in, in now they're just giving up on it. They're just saying, Bow, do whatever you want. We just need your vote. Under the exactly. guise of racism. Yeah, yeah. of course. Under the guise of, right. you know, the mother should not be punished. Well, for God's sakes, man, it's moral decency. That's all it is. You freaks. All right. Now, <laughs> on with the countdown. Scott Robbins, yeah. trifecta, the top uh, three of the day, up to number two. Number two, Bill Gates is taking on farting cows. Yeah, elites are at it again. Very concerned about the planet. Bill Gates seems to be taking a page from AOC's book, and away we go. He said in a recent interview that cows have a digestion system that emits methane. He said, quote, we need to change cows and work towards artificial meat. There you go. Bill Gates is on board now as well. The elites are obsessed with not allowing us to eat meat, aren't they? Man. He's pretty much run out, hasn't he? Are people still listening to what he has to say on a large scale? Please. Every mammal's digestive system emits. emits we don't have time, method. man. Every time I hear Bill Gates, I want to hear the interview where he got it. Asked about Epstein's Island yeah, and all right. his trips on the plane. Uh, well, and finally. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The Scott Robbins trifecta. Casey's in a hurry. Um, we're up to number one now? Yeah? One. Yeah. Okay. One. Yeah. Have we forgiven Will Smith? It's interesting. He was gone for a while after the big slap incident, if you recall. 
Yeah. Um, he when he slapped uh, Chris Rock in, at the Oscars, by the way, in front of a big, big audience who happened to be watching it, uh, he took issue with Rock's reference to uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, his wife, and went up and slapped him across the face. Well. Everybody was predicting, well, this could be the end for him. How is he going to come back from this? Is he ever going to come back for this? How long is it going to take? Well, he's got the number one movie at the box office this week, Bad Boys Ride or Die. So I think it's been forgiven. I think we've moved on. Well, David and I want to bet against you. I know, and I'll admit that, yes, I was the one. (laughs) I thought this was a career wrecker. There's no way you bounce back from this. But no. Well, I don't think he's going to be as big as he was. I mean, the box office is bombing. Yeah. yeah, and uh, well, it did fairly well. Was, I mean, the movie did well at the box office. I mean, it did. It you know took in what fifty eight million dollars. But as far as summer blockbuster, oh yeah, well, yeah, every, the movie thing is way in, is in the tank. Yes, yeah. it used to be. I mean, fifty eight million would not get you number one in the summer. I'm surprised it wasn't bad. Don't call us boys <laughs> for gender fluid. That would have. <laughs> You know, and there you have it. Oh, yes, so much Scott news. Robbins trifecta. He's mad yeah. at Will Smith after the slap. It was everything else that came out after that when I realized how pathetic he is. Yeah, that, well, that's true. <laughs> well, there's something else going on yeah. there. Then you had that story. I'm almost uncomfortable bringing it up. Oh, that he's gay? Well, that this guy walked in on him and the other yeah. dude. Wasn't that the story? Yeah. That was wild, man. Yeah, well... Because it, she's having, his wife's having affairs with all these other people. And he, it's just a weird thing, Giant man. Giant naked game of Twister. Oh, boy. I, yeah. All right. News update. Memorizing the news coming up. Do you hear that? Asthma triggers are everywhere, from dust mites, pet dander, and pollen, to smog and smoke. An asthma attack can strike anywhere, anytime. Be prepared with quick-acting primatine mist, clinically proven to open airways quickly. It's the number one FDA-approved asthma inhaler available over-the-counter. Primatine mist. Breathe easy again. Use as directed. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym for a while. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I used to get. Could be a lower testosterone. Lower T. Yeah, I went through it a while back. Once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone. I got Nugenix Total T, and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that ad on TV. Is it for real? Oh, yeah. The key ingredient is something called Tesnor, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again at work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text all to 321321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea, the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text ALL to 321321. That's all to 321321. The Angie's List You Know and Trust is now Angie, and we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. The Mark Van Camp and Robin Show. Well, there's always action on prize picks. Perfect time to try out something new. Well, yeah, basketball is winding down, at least the NBA. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mavericks in a little trouble. They can come back. I we'll see what so. happens. Yeah. Uh, with prize picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in just one game watching your favorite sports. Uh, you can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six players, stat projections, and you are locked in. Baseball is happening big time. Women's basketball is out there. And, of course, there's always something going on that you can play. Well, if you're looking for promotions, Price Picks has got you covered every week. All you got to do is check the app for more details on right. that. And, you know, hey, if you want to try out eSports this month, every Wednesday and Saturday in June, if your lineup doesn't win, you'll get your entry feedback. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active viewers. Members. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 
viewers, members. Okay. Did you say movers? I said movers at first, then I went viewers, <laughs> then I went members. Got third time's a charm, buddy. Hmm, buddy. <laughs> Download the app today. Use code MOOBER. <laughs> oh, don't, don't. No, code don't. MVCR. Yeah. Yeah. For a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks, okay. let's go to MVCR on Prize Picks for a first deposit match up to a hundred movers. <laughs> pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yes, it is. Mover. Yes. I got a frustrating story for you if you want it. All right. Okay. So say you have a place and you're going to go Airbnb and you're going to let it be rented out. You're going to go like a month at a time, even or in multiple months. That's what happened in North Carolina. This woman, it's Farzana Rahman, said uh, they were supposed to be out May 24th. They're refusing to leave until there's an eviction order. Well. well. All the different laws? Yeah. Yet listen to this. It's so frustrating, man. You've, you've seen stories like this before? Now they're refusing to leave until we, there's an eviction order. I think they're just trying to gain time to stay there for free. I mean, I'm counting on this income. My son is in college. I'm a single parent. It's wasting my time. It's wasting my energy. It's stressing me out. She went there with the cops. Unbelievable. Cops like, yeah, yeah, we'll leave tomorrow. And then they put a note up on the front door. Don't trespass. Oh, gosh. So now using legal means to stay. That's all you got to do. Got to have some sort of order. You know, man. Don't you just want to see instant justice with something well, I want like to see that? Baton to the back of the skull. Yes. Get the hell out of that lady's house. Yeah, like you got one warning. We're coming back tomorrow. It's going to get ugly. We don't want it to get ugly, but you got to get out. Oh my gosh, it's just insane. All right, we got to get to Nimrod. It feels like we already started it. Roll it out. When the going gets tough, damn it, this is too hard. The dumb get dumber. All right, Dan. It's Nimrod's in the news on the Martley, Van Camp, and Robbins show. I love the poorly educated. All right. Nimrod's in the news. We're running out of time. Running out of time. I'll make this quick. Um, there is a competitive hobby horse rider. I didn't know there was such a thing, but it is very upset that people don't think it's, quote, a real sport. No, it isn't. <laughs> Competitive hobby horse riding? Well, of course, no, it's... Okay. <laughs> and the former mayor of Rio, de Janeiro, um, taking a little heat, he joined a Zoom call while sitting on a toilet. Well, felt like that was bad for him. He's like, I'm not tubing. No, at least he didn't do that, right? And that's Nimrod's in the news.